So the Astros are going to the World Series again, and for some reason, all the grocery stores are sold out of trash cans. But anyways, we've got two new Stud Stack members today, and if you don't know, the Stud Stack is our private little group. It's not even little, it's got like over a hundred people in it, full of makers who run businesses. They help each other out, answer each other's questions, share experiences. So if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, links down in the description. But first, we need to get these guys their welcome packets. So this week was pretty boring, all things considered, compared to last week where we had all the craziness with the pop-up shop. If you haven't seen that video yet, definitely go watch it. But in the middle of all that, we gave away something that other people would pay thousands of dollars for, and we just gave it away for free. I know, I know, that's contrary to what we've said before, but we're gonna talk about it. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. I'm fulfilling a board for one of our realtors, and then after that, uh, we're gonna hop in the stud stack for a while and have some conversations with people. Um, but yeah, it's a busy morning, but it's gonna be a good time. I'm excited. So we also did our very first fulfillment for our board refinishing kits. So when a real estate agent sends a board to a homeowner, there's a little card inside the box that says you can get a refinishing kit for just $1. So we're losing money on those kits, but here's why we're okay with that. First off, that tells us that they're a client that cares about their board. They cared about it enough to say, oh, I want the refinishing kit so that I can fix it up and keep it nice. And we get their contact information because we need their email address and their address to be able to ship this package to them. So when we go back through and look at the entire list of people who have gotten these refinishing kits, we've already pre-qualified them all as people who wanna take good care of their stuff. They really liked our board and they're already warmed up to us. But eventually down the line, when we're selling thousands of dollars in, in kitchen tables to these people, losing a few bucks in the refinishing kits is not gonna be a big deal. If you wanna learn more about this technique, just Google customer acquisition cost, and that'll lead you to a few strategies. So 
So, I know you're used to seeing all of our boards have engravings in a wreath where it's just like one initial or maybe somebody's like last name written out on the board. You haven't seen many orders like this where it's like a little quote. And uh, that's an option we provide. Like we do leave a text box on our website with a limited amount of characters um, with a message you can write on the front of the board. I have a set illustrator file just for these types of projects. This one is a text only template. I have others that are like just a wreath template or just a name template that I keep open up. And uh, all I have to do is update those and export. You've got to keep it simple, but also make it look like you offer a bunch of options. We make it look like our boards are fully customizable because they are, but we have one set font. We have one set template so that we can do it really, really quickly. Now your next question may be, what if they type something in there that you don't like or inappropriate, or they type in a swear word or, you know, they want something that's considered maybe inappropriate or something that you don't want to type on a board and have sent with your business's name all over it. That my friends is where your terms and condition page will save your life. If that is typed up clearly on your terms and condition page on your website, you're not saying it's because I personally don't want to do it. You are pointing and saying, according to my terms and conditions, page for this business, it says that I cannot engrave that on a board. I'm sorry if you'd like to change what it says to make it in line with our terms and conditions. I would love to engrave that for you and we can get moving as soon as possible. Obviously this one was perfectly fine. It's just a fun little saying about wine and cheese, which is perfect because it's a cheese board. So pretty creative, I thought actually, but we have had to deal with that before where somebody requested something on a board that Mm, it was a little inappropriate and like I wouldn't really even say it on YouTube so it probably wasn't okay to put on a board um, and that's exactly what we did we just pointed to our terms and conditions page and said according to this we can't do it good morning so we just got back from the gym not too long ago and we are ready to start our day. We have kind of a busy week. Um, I am going to give a little talk on like Instagram and social media marketing to an entire real estate office, uh, which is super cool. But as I'm writing all of this up, I'm noticing like this answers a lot of questions that we get. And so I figured I'd bring you guys along as I was typing up what I was gonna talk about because it answers a lot of questions we get. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand them a slip of paper that has like my top five things to remember. Like if they remember nothing else that I say all morning, at least follow these five simple steps when posting on Instagram. So Instagram stories often get watched more often than your Instagram feed post. That's what people are watching. That's what keeps people's attention. Also, they're easy to watch. People can just click on it and they get three to five seconds of entertainment or information, whereas the feed, they have to keep scrolling and then they have to read copy and that's just a lot of work. So make sure your Instagram stories are updated. The second thing I wanna leave them with, videos are always better than pictures. Instagram has even come out and said we are no longer like a picture app or a video app. So anytime you can post videos, posting reels to your feed, videos of what you do, those are always gonna get more engagement. And three, hook people within the first three seconds. If people don't pay attention the first three seconds, they're not gonna watch the rest of your video. Four, give value. Teach people how to do something. Show people what you do in the background. You have to offer some sort of value in your content nowadays. It can't just be a pretty picture. Uh, and step five, use hashtags for who you want to reach. If you want to reach realtors, do hashtag realtor and help yourself get found. I see a lot of people um, who don't put any hashtags in their comments or in the copy of their you know feed posts. Got to make sure you're reaching out and, and getting different people in the community. So those are my five main points. Obviously I'm gonna talk about some more things. They also wanna know how to like make an Instagram reel, like physically what buttons to push. But I know a lot of people I'm probably gonna lose halfway through the talk. They're gonna get bored. Maybe they don't like social media. I'm gonna to have to try to get them on board. But if nothing else, I've got five tips that they can fall back on if they remember absolutely nothing else about what I say. So I know you just watched me like breeze through those five pretty basic tips about Instagram. But if you don't know anything about Instagram, if you are brand new to it, there's a lot of information just in those five tips. You could take all that information, put it into a PowerPoint and charge three to five grand to go teach people about it. There's an entire industry surrounding just teaching the basics of, of social media, of, of how to use platforms to people who have no experience. So why did we do this for free? I mean, the head realtor literally looked at me and said, 
Don't tell people you're doing this for free because she knows how much it costs to have somebody come in and teach it all. We did it for free because we knew it was a very easy way to add value to them. So why are we trying to add value to a repeat customer? We don't need to sell them again. It's because we wanna strengthen the relationship. When it comes to business relationships, each of you are essentially just trading favors. And the stronger our relationship gets, the higher probability I have of getting a referral to somebody else she knows. So for at least right now, we're not gonna start a new business in social media consulting or anything like that but it was a really good opportunity for both parties to win and to strengthen a relationship. And a lot of times in business, we get caught up in the details, the transactions, the numbers, the products, and we lose the relationship, we lose the people. But in fact, that's probably the most important part. Businesses are people too. Quite literally, that's how the IRS treats them. Guys, the realtors gave me this wreath as a thank you for doing social media training. Isn't it pretty? Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the play.